God is in his holy place, God who unites those who dwell in his house. He himself gives might and strength to his people. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning and welcome as we celebrate Mass this day on this 17th Sunday of Ordinary Time. It's a goodness of us to gather, and as always, we prepare to celebrate our Mass, mindful of our sins. Let's open our hearts to God's divine mercy. Lord Jesus, your word is the treasure and hope for our lives. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your love is the pearl of great price. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you invite all to the gift of salvation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us from our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to, to God, God in the, in the highest, highest, and on, on earth, earth peace to, to people of goodwill. Of goodwill. We, we praise you, you we, we bless you, you we adore you, you we glorify you, you we, give we give you thanks for your great glory. glory. Lord God, God heavenly King, King O God, God Almighty, Almighty Father, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only, only begotten Son, Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of, Son of the Father, Father, you take you away the sins of the world, world have mercy on us. You, you take, take away the sins of the world, world receive our prayer. prayer. You, you are seated at the right, right hand of the Father, Father have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, ask something of me and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O oh Lord, my God, you have made me your servant, king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, Because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, not for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding so that you may know what is right. I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now. And after you, there will come no one equal to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, I love your commands. Lord, I love your commands. I have said, O oh Lord, that my part is to keep your words. The law of your mouth is to me more precious than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Lord, I love your commands. Let your kindness comfort me according to your promise to your servants. Let your compassion come to me that I may live for your law is my delight. Lord, I love your commands. For I love your command more than gold, however fine. For in all your precepts I go forward, every false way I hate. Lord, I love your commands. Wonderful are your decrees, therefore I observe them. 
The revelation of your words sheds light, giving understanding to the simple. Lord, I love your commands. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to the little ones the mysteries of your kingdom. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, yes. And he replied, then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So on this third Sunday in a row, we hear these wonderful parables of Jesus just sharing the mystery of the kingdom of heaven, sharing the goodness of who we are inv invited and called to be as growing, becoming disciples of Jesus Christ. And so the goodness of these rich images that Jesus, and when he uses parables as the master teacher, is always using very earthy kinds of, of realities that people could really identify with. In the last couple of weeks, the, the whole sower and the seed and the weeds and things that were right around the, the people listening to his teaching in these parables. And now to talk about a treasure buried in a field, a pearl of great price, a net thrown into the sea, which is the most common kind of fishing. When I was a child on the lake, we used a cane pole and with our worms and a bobber, but that was really limiting of how many we could catch if we did. But it gives us these wonderful, wonderful images that really speak to the value of God's kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, and the giftedness of for all of us to embrace the salvation that opens that whole reality of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven to all of us, no matter what it is. And so it's in that goodness that we listen to these great images. And there's always a little bit of a, a twist. We might have a little sense of smile when talk about the guy who found a treasure, then buried it again and went and sold everything so he could go and dig it up. And it's one of those realities that Jesus teaches the kingdom of heaven is not something that anybody can steal. We can grow into, but it's God's kingdom. And so that whole image of guys selling and making it a priority to grow into the goodness of the kingdom of heaven is just a powerful, powerful image. The pearl of great price. 
Do we set great priority of their relationship with Jesus Christ? Do we set great priority of this journey that every one of us is on to the kingdom of heaven and growing more deeply into the reality of God's kingdom right here and now? You and I as witnesses, as disciples of his kingdom. And so is that kind of image and that kind of, of priority and that kind of treasure, God's kingdom, a relationship with Jesus Christ, really something that is so much more valuable than all of the things of this world, all of our toys and our cars and our, our pursuit of earthly kind of treasures, whatever it might be, not that they're bad in themselves, but sometimes they can become real distractions. What life is really about and the goodness of this journey that every single one of us is on. God wants us all to live forever. When we take our last breath in this world, to be able to live for all eternity in the fullness of God's presence. That's the ultimate treasure. That's the ultimate pearl of great price. And so Jesus gives this whole image of the net thrown into the sea, sea gathering all kinds of, of fish then that were taken on the shore and then sorted, the good and the bad, is that that gift of salvation, that gift of God's kingdom, is offered to everyone. But the reality is, as we heard about last Sunday with the weeds and the wheat, that God well knows that the reality is that in the midst of all the good and all the good people and striving to be faithful and living the gospel, there's evil in our world. We don't have to think about or listen to the news, our own realities in our own lives many times, that there's evil in the world. And so this very patient God says, ultimately, God will have the last word. There will be a judgment day. And for sometimes when people don't think that there is a hell, sometimes there's people who think everybody's gonna go to heaven. Well, that's God's desire, but that's not always the choice of people as we live in this world. And so it's why conversion is such a powerful need and goal in our lives, just growing a relationship with the Lord in many different ways. And so in the midst of all the good that we experience in the midst of the evil, we have this value and this treasure, this pearl of great price of God's kingdom. And it's St. Paul in the second reading who just really reminds us that God is really present in all things, in all things. And doesn't mean that all things are good, doesn't mean that all things are evil, but no matter what we experience within ourselves and with our lives, that God is very present. And so God is very present in our world and working and being a part of our lives. Just the power when we are aware of that and open to God's grace. And so God is present, and as St. Paul reminds us, in all things, in our goodness, in our sadness, in our disabilities, in our abilities, in our disappointments, in our loneliness, in our confusion about life, no matter what it is, God is, is in all things. And we trust that God will always bring good, always bring good out of whatever it is we experience. That's faith. That's the kind of trust that we're invited to grow into. That's the treasure of the pearl of great price, the treasure of that relationship with God that the Lord invites us into and how we share how we grow into in so many different ways. And so, good for us to hear that message, to grow together as God's people. I believe in one, in one God, God, the Father, the Father Almighty, Almighty, maker, maker of, of heaven, heaven and earth, earth of, all of all things visible, visible and, and invisible. invisible. I believe, I believe in, in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the only begotten Son, Son of God, God born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will will come come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In that same faith, let us offer to God the needs of the church, the needs of us all. That Pope Francis, Bishop Donald, and all ministers of faith may be strengthened by God to inspire all the faithful as disciples of the Lord's gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As they strive to represent those who they govern, may all leaders do so with humility, integrity, and true concern for the common good of all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who work tirelessly to defend life at every stage, from conception to natural death, that God might reward them for their faithfulness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering from or affected by the intense heat and weather this week, that they may find relief and be filled with hope, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Bishop Hying and the group of pilgrims who are currently hiking the Camino de Santiago in Spain, that they have a safe pilgrimage and may be inspired in their faith by walking the way of St. James, ending with the veneration of this apostle's tomb. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the intention of this mass, Melvin Bolig, and for all who have died, may now enjoy the promise of eternal life, and may those who mourn their loss be confronted, comforted. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our personal intentions, which we now pause and present to our Lord in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God Almighty, we thank you for your love the gift of that love and goodness, your word that is truly a treasure and a pearl of great price in our lives. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for the goodness of your promise to always receive and answer our prayers of need. We do so this day and offer them in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of my sins. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness. Amen. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. 
So with all the angels, we praise you. As in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the, in the highest. highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirits upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. We proclaim your, your death, O Lord, Lord, and profess and your resurrection until, until you come, come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Please offer the Lord's word of peace to those who may be near to you. Peace. Lamb of God. You, you take you. away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am I'm not, not worthy, worthy that you should, should enter under, under my, my roof, roof, but only say, say the word, word and my soul shall be healed. healed. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul and never forget all his benefits.
the body of Christ. Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our Mass has ended. We go in Christ's peace. Thanks be to God. Our presider of this Eucharistic celebration for the 17th Sunday in Summer Ordinary Time was Monsignor Larry Bakke, the chaplain of the Apostolate for Persons with Disabilities of the Diocese of Madison. I am Megan Wedwick, a member of Divine Mercy Parish in Sauk City, and the Director of the Apostolate for Persons with Disabilities of the Diocese of Madison. It was a blessing to share in this television mass ministry as your lector commentator this morning. By the American Sign Language interpretation of Mary Fruits of St. Dennis Parish in Madison and the Apostolate sponsoring closed captioning, our sisters and brothers in faith who are deaf or hard of hearing were able to share with us in this celebration of faith and word. Through the generosity and social concern of the owner, management, and staff of WISC-TV for persons of all faiths with disabilities living in their homes or healthcare facilities, we are able to bring you this program of faith, hope, and inspiration. May you have a beautiful week and know the comfort of the Lord in your lives. <laughs>